Hey everybody, it's Belle, and I'm back uh, with another browser game, very old browser game, um, that uh, helps me <laughs> when I'm anxious. It's called Boomshine, and I played this actually in uh, college um, to, calm, to calm my anxiety. So, uh, I'm playing it on albinoblacksheep.com, very old site. And, uh, let me see if maybe the volume can go down just a little more. Okay. Um, so, it, it's not very clear on the directions. So, level one goal, <clears throat> you want one out of five. Uh, and you ha there's these little dots that float around the screen. And, um, you just click. And if a dot collides with, um, what you exploded with, with your original expansion or the dots that um, touch it, uh, then you get, then you get like train reactions. Um, and uh, again, what I like is it's, it's very low pressure. Um, if you don't get it, it's, it's not going to shoot you back to the beginning. Uh, the harshest thing on here is the red, you failed, and it's like, meh. But you'll see, I just was doing this, see. So close, just one away. <laughs> so you just gotta kind of um, predict where they're going, and it can chain for a while if it, if it goes long enough. I mean, they only expand for, for so long. Um, but... When I first started playing this, uh, I thought you had to click on one of the little balls to make them expand. I didn't realize you could just expand them. <laughs> expand somewhere and let the, the little orbs run into it. Um, but yeah, it's a very, for me, it's a very calming game. Again, no pressure. The music is very calming. I actually used to listen to this music on loop when I was studying. Um, and for me it was, I don't know, I mean, like, nothing can, can super get rid of my anxiety, uh, I don't, you know, I don't, um, my anxiety is something that is very much at a level where I am, I'm in control of it, and it doesn't interfere too much with my everyday life. Uh, so I don't go out and I get, uh, extra help with it. Um, which is not the best option. Um, being a psych major, technically I should, I should know better. Um, but because I can, I can live and I can manage it, um, in my own way, uh, I tend not to seek outside help, but it does mean that I've, I've developed these kinds of just small coping mechanisms, because again, my anxiety isn't, it's not debilitating, it doesn't stop me from, from doing things, it's just occasionally I need to, to pull back and take care of myself and recover and recoup, um, which is an, an interesting thing, because a lot of my anxiety is, is social anxiety, but I'm not an introverted person, um, I'm just socially anxious person, uh, which is an which is an odd combination. Um, I I enjoy people. I get a lot of energy and happiness from from being around people, and it's not the people themselves that make me need to recharge. It's just the social anxiety that I experience um, from being around people. Because even when I'm I'm recharging, like even when I I need a break. I still crave to be around people and need need people around me to talk to or I just I end up not feeling well. I end up actually getting getting worse and starting instead of transitioning from, you know, social anxiety to uh actually being depressed. Um and a lot of I've found the best things you can do for yourself is to understand, you know, how you feel and where it's coming from, and then figure out little ways to 
to get yourself through. It's not gonna... It's not gonna fix it. You know, it's not gonna stop it from happening again. Um, right now, as I'm talking, I'm just kind of clicking, because again, this is a very... A uh, low pressure game, so I'm not sitting here like waiting for the best strategy or best time because it just expands. So as I'm sitting here talking to you about uh, my experiences with anxiety, I'm just like, yeah, maybe the bubbles will reach, maybe they won't. Almost did there. Yeah, it's all right. But uh, yeah, the best thing that you can do for yourself is really be honest with yourself. Try to understand what causes your uh, anxiety or your depression and and sometimes it's it's not easy and it's not simple and you might come to find that what causes your anxiety or your depression is outside of your control and that's okay too and that's definitely when you want to go get help get some kind of assistance with it because when it's outside of your control that's when you really really need other people you really need um, a professional or just somebody you have to let somebody know because it's not it's not a personal failing if something like your depression or your anxiety is completely outside of your control um, you just you really need to be honest with yourself like I can be honest with myself this part of my anxiety is not outside of my control I just need a little bit of space to myself I just need a little time to um, you know, come to terms with it, come, um, remove myself from s the social interaction that's giving me that, uh, stimulus, and then I can, I can recover and go back to, you know, <laughs> that was the worst, <laughs> how I'm supposed to be, uh, or not supposed to be, but how I am comfortable, um, and, for me, that, that took being honest with myself about, you know, my anxiety, about uh, how I interact with people. And in, in one case, it, it took forcing myself to expand my social circle because a lot of the time, while I do have social anxiety, a lot of that stems from this fear of alienating the few people who I spend a lot of time with um, and that can be exacerbated if those people for whatever reason don't have time to spend with me and you know that's that's not their fault nobody has 24 7 to spend with you know someone else and it's not something that I ever wanted to to hold them to but it became a problem and it became a problem with friendships and it became a self-fulfilling prophecy kind of thing where my need for um, attention to control my anxiety uh, interfered with my friend's need for their own autonomy, you know? Uh, and it's very important to, to step back, take a step back and figure out what can I do to help myself? And for me, that was expanding my social circle. So unless I'm up at God forsaken hours in the morning, um, which happens very rarely, but I do have some insomnia, um, generally there's somebody around for me to talk to. And that doesn't mean I'm talking to friends, you know, all the time constantly. It just means that when I'm starting to feel anxious and alone, um, I really need to to take it into my own hands and then make sure I have somebody around. And then that also fed into, I had to be proactive about it. I couldn't just wait for people to talk to me. I couldn't just wait for somebody out of the blue to just sense that something was wrong with me, um, that I needed somebody. And that meant, you know, not just... I guess, uh, not just talking to people, but also being the proactive person in their life who talks to them as I, like, scroll through my Skype list and think, oh, who, who haven't I talked to in a while, who, uh, might need somebody to talk to, who, um, who would really like this song that I picked up, because a lot of my life is very, 
uh, friend focused, which is very odd for somebody with uh, social anxiety. Um, to me, it's, it seems a little odd or counterintuitive that a lot of my life is focused on um, friends, but I, I'm just, you know, I'm just kind of spouting off personal things, but it took me being, you know, honest with myself with what was causing my anxiety and what was feeding into it for me to understand how to uh, work with it. And being honest with myself was that, you know, some of the things I was self-sabotaging, some of the things were beyond my control, but here were things I can do. So besides expanding my friend group to make sure, you know, I had people to talk to, the other thing I had to do was figure out ways to alleviate the anxiety. And this game is, um, is one of those games, even though obviously <laughs> not super good at it. I th believe this is the last level and I've been on it for like maybe the last five minutes while I'm sitting here talking to you about anxiety, but, um, yeah, it's really important to me for, especially when, when we have these issues is we need to be honest with ourselves about what is causing it and what we can do. And it's just as important to me, um, for people to, to realize that if there's nothing that they personally can do, that's not a personal failing. Like, my ability here to control my anxiety via this game is, it's like, you know, having some sort of mild disease where, you know, I only have to take the pill or the, my medicine. It's like, okay, here we go. I have asthma, or at least I had it growing up. It was exercise induced. That meant that um, when I was playing soccer as a kid or when I was doing gym, if I pushed it too far, then I would have to take my inhaler. Um, I'm not somebody whose asthma requires more severe treatments. I'm not somebody who has to, uh, who has to take it just for pretty much anything. My asthma was pretty, was in certain situations and I could control those if I didn't push myself too far. And eventually, um, I kind of grew out of it a little bit. I still have issues with it. Um, but that's different than somebody who, who can't just, who can't just like, well, I'll only push myself X far or here's how I recover if I push myself too far. So it's just different levels. So it's not a personal failing. It's not something you yourself can control. If you can't fix your anxiety or alleviate your anxiety um, via these games or some other coping mechanism that maybe a friend or the internet talks about, it's, it's not a personal failing. It just means that you need a different kind of help. And that's, you know, real and, and valid too. And <laughs> I sometimes I feel guilty that I haven't gone to therapy for my anxiety. Um, I, I have gone to therapy before in my life, but I have not for specific, specifically for my anxiety. And um, I, I feel guilty about it per se because I am a, a psych major. Uh, and so, like I learned about it and, and you know, like the doctors make the worst patients kind of thing, the, you know, psych, I have a degree in psychology and yeah, it's just like, nah, maybe I don't need to go. Maybe things aren't as bad as I think. But again, I've, I've been honest with myself and I've been able to get my anxiety to a level where it doesn't interfere with my daily life. Um, but that's not possible for everyone. And I don't think people hear it enough that that not being able to, to cope on their own or if these coping mechanisms don't work for them or the breathing exercises don't work for them, that it's somehow a personal failing. When it's not, it just means it's not the right medicine for you. It just means that that you might need a professional to diagnose a medicine for you that, that maybe you need out that you, you might need outside help and that's not a failing and it's not 
that something is is broken or permanently wrong. It just means the tools aren't within your grasp and you, you might need some help just to get them. And I, I, I really just want people to feel comfortable not only being honest with themselves and how they can help themselves, but being honest with when they need other people's help. Um, it's, I don't know, it's very important to me, especially times right now where a lot of people are very scared and worried, and that can exacerbate um, other issues, you know? Uh, we were so close right there. So, I don't know. I don't know if we're gonna beat this level. Uh, I don't know if I want to beat this level. Just kind of, because I believe this is the last level. And so if we beat it, then we just we just start over. But it's still pretty and calming, and the music continues and loops pretty much forever. <laughs> but yeah. So I mean, this has been 16 minutes of me kind of rambling about. Uh, oh, we did beat it, <laughs> me rambling about, um, uh, the, the ways to cope with anxiety and how I do it and how this is just one way, um, but I, I don't know, maybe it didn't help you, maybe it did, but I will put a link to this game down below, uh, and I, I hope if it does help you that you maybe share it with someone else and if it doesn't and you decide you do need help that you realize there's nothing to be ashamed about with that um and i'm wishing everybody the best for you know the rest of the year for the coming years because we're all gonna really need each other um but yeah thanks for watching and i will talk to you guys later bye